Baby Gorgeous. Welcome to Bravo and Please, where we're going to get lit off all the latest going on in the Bravo TV world. This is a safe and uncensored space to discuss our love for everything pop culture and 420 related. So grab your can of goodies and let's get lit. Yes, we're live. I am your girl, Jenny Blaze. Today, we're going to cover all the latest Scandal news since last week, and we are going to discuss season five, because I've been doing a rewatch. Sorry, I'm just realizing I need to move my camera. Um, <laughs> I've been doing a rewatch, and also, we have the never-before-seen footage from last week's episode, which was disturbing. Um, and then obviously we have this week's new show. So make sure you subscribe and turn on not notifications on YouTube so you can re be reminded to join in on the interactive chat, like I mentioned on Instagram live and see all the wonderful visuals for today's episode. Also, you can't hear the audio that I hear if you're on IG. So join us over on YouTube if you can. However... If you can't catch our live video, it's always available for replay. Also, if you're a podcast listener, don't worry because all of our episodes are available on Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. Subscribing, reviewing, sharing, liking, and or leaving a five-star rating is incredibly appreciated and helps this show to continue to grow. Also, don't forget our social media handle is at Bravo and Blaze on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, everywhere pretty much. And as you know, bravoandblaze.com has all sorts of fun Bravo-inspired merch and products from your favorite shows. This one right here is a Grandfather MF or Mug. Um, last week I shared um, a request for a Team Ariana shirt. It's available um, as a uni unisex sweatshirt, a crop top sweatshirt, and a v-neck t-shirt. Um, but this week, oh, I forgot to share my lovely visuals over here on YouTube. Scandaval. We have the picture of Tom. Tom broke his silence while I was live, actually. So my live reaction to Tom's TMZ appearance is on an IG live that I did. I'll have to drop a link in that. Um, and then yesterday... Was it yesterday? The 29th. Yes. Yesterday we saw Shayna, you know, walking in the rain outside of court. You know, I'm so annoyed about that because as a woman and, you know, I don't think men really understand, but like our fashion is different when it comes to professional attire. And I can see Shayna because like I have short legs and my mother always told me like don't leave the house unless you have heels on so i'd always wear heels and then when you get your pants hemmed you usually get them done like just above the ground is like perfect makes it look like the most sleek and it was raining so shana got her pants all wet because of raquel all because of this pr stunt or whatever you want to call it but anyways um this week can't sidetracked because I do have a new Scandal Spiral notebook available at bravoandblaze.com. I'm going to have to order so I can actually show, um, but we got a new lightning bolt. And essentially, I put this together because I have a whole Scandal survival kit that I um, am going to go through towards the end of this. Um, it's everything you need for rewatching from season one, um, or maybe it's your first time watching. I don't know, but I got all the essentials in one list for you so you can have everything in one place. But before we get started, I want to give a disclaimer that this is for entertainment purposes only. This is not your source for world news and facts or like fact checking. This is like, I'm going off of social media and like, what I, what people send me. <laughs> I don't know. This world is wild, okay? And I'm just simply trying to document how, you know, like 
my emotional journey through Scandival and like all the different wild paths that it has led me on because I'm invested in this. I mean, these people have been on our screens for 10 seasons and this is just so wild. So, so what the audacity it's very audacious. Um, Anyways, I'm getting off script now, but <laughs> obviously I'm a little worked up. Okay, so moving on. Also, if you've been following along, you may know that I'm a former IT and business management consultant for over 15 years with the best global consulting firms in the world. I've helped eight-figure businesses grow to nine-figure businesses. And if you are looking for digital strategy and business solutions, professional services, please make sure to check out Cannabis Mom Boss. My other podcast, in addition to helping entrepreneurs grow their businesses, the mission of Cannabis Mom Boss is to empower others to safely and confidently come out of the quote unquote green closet and modernize the perception of today's cannabis consumers. Normally, BS before Scandival, Cannabis Mom Boss was live on Thursdays actually at 1 p.m. Um, this t same time slot, but I think since Scandival has like changed everyone's lives, I mean, it's changed my life. I think I'm going to do my Bravo and Blaze weekly show on Thursdays at this time until um, Scandival, until Vanderpump Rules season is over. And then um, I'm not sure if I'm starting tomorrow or next week with Cannabis Mom Boss, but basically I think I'm going to switch. I'll do Bravo and Blaze on Thursdays and Cannabis Mom Boss on Fridays, but everything is all in the same place. Unless you're an audio pod podcast listener, then um, the podcasts are in different locations. You just search on each one separately. But if you are a podcast listener, you're in luck because Cannabis Mom Boss is also available on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and iHeartRadio. Oh, okay. Let's get into Scandaval. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this is still going on. By the way, it's still my birthday month. I can't believe this started right before my birthday and then this has been going on ever since I like I had to go you'll see in my stories that I share on my screen soon over on YouTube but like I had to stop I had to put myself on a diet because Scandival basically I'm like an emotional eater and Scandival has had me stressed out so I also with my being in my birthday month obviously I'm gonna like take advantage of that so I had way more like indulgences than I should have and whatever that's a side note but <laughs> okay so quick recap of what's been going on if you are new to Scandaval welcome to hell just kidding this is more like heaven I think um, I'm not sure if it's a curse or a gift I'm not sure but like the rest of the world the deepest parts of my soul have been shook when I heard the news of Tom Sandoval having a full-on love affair with Raquel Levis. And if you have been watching VPR, Vanderpump Rules, you know that Tom Sandoval had been dating Ariana Maddox for almost a decade and Raquel was her close friend. So I'm sure you can imagine how heartbreaking this has been for all of us. But since last week, I went live with Ryan Bailey of So Good It's Bad with Ryan Bailey. I'm sure you all know him. Everyone knows him. Um, but make sure you check out that episode if you missed it. The link is in the show notes. Like I said, I've been doing a rewatch of all Vanderpump Rules, and I just finished season five. And I kind of like, I was cranking through them because I wanted to like hurry up and like get to where Raquel comes on the scene. So now what I think I'm going to do is watch try to do like one season per week until the end of Vanderpump Rules. I got to check the schedule. I don't know exactly how, how it's going to work out. I could maybe do half a season a week, but it's like there's so much going on. I just feel like I have to, I have to keep going. But <laughs> um, also this past week, Tom Sandoval broke his silence to TMZ. <sighs> And I was actually live when I watched it. Um, I didn't know it came out, so I shared it 
with my reaction on my IG live. So go check out my Instagram because it's over there. I think it was Tuesday. I don't know what day it was anymore. Um, but also this week, Shayna had her court date yesterday, like I said before, and she was caught by TMZ coming out. Um, also, shout out to Vanderpump Party on Instagram because they also got a lot of footage and Shayna had her moment. I actually turned on this mic before because I wanted to, you know, like after the intro, I was going to come in with good as gold, just like in this week's episode where they did a surprise. What was it like bat? Not bachelor party, bri bridal shower, <laughs> surprise bridal shower. And when Shayna walked in, they were saying good as gold for her. And it was just so cute. And Shayna is the MVP this week. So big ups to Shayna. Um, which, by the way, behind me, Luann wishes she could wear this. Oh, wait, I saw this up. Hold on. Oh, like I mentioned, I'm going to go through my Scandival survival kit towards the end. And I'm going to switch. I'm going to remove this from the screen. But if you can see me... And this dress, you may have seen that I wore this on my birthday dinner. And this is from Shayna's. Shayna did a collaboration with Bella Boss. And I got this like maybe a year ago. But then when Scandal started happening, there was all these pictures coming out. And um, Ariana has the same dress. So I was like, oh my gosh. And I never wore it until my birthday. So... And people were asking where it was from, but I for, like I forgot. So it's from Bella Boss. Love it. And I noticed that the dress Shayna wore to that surprise party or whatever, um, that also I think was from her same collaboration. So I wanted to just give a shout out. All right. I am going to share my, my Instagram stories. So... If you're on Instagram Live right now, come join us on YouTube because I'm going to share what I see and we're going to go through all of it, okay? So the first thing, after I streamed live with uh, Ryan Bailey, there was um, an article that came out that said um, Tom Sandoval and Raquel Levis were destroyed. They used the word destroyed. Um, and I just thought that was kind of funny like how can you just whatever anyways um so one thing that I posted out of the article from TMZ asked for which cast members almost got in the fight we know it was not Tom Raquel or Ariana we're told the instigator is not someone you'd guess to me that would be Schwartz and Lisa Vanderpump because Obviously, I expect DJ James Kennedy and I expect Lala to go off. Like, that's their style. Um, and there's this. Andy asked Tom and Raquel if they're still together. And the takeaway is that, yes, they still are. But a source close to production tells TMZ that that relationship is like on an egg timer. It's not going to last. Okay. Who said that? Whew. Okay. What's this one? The Bravo Babe posted. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to skip this one because it has to do with Schwartz and Joe and all that stuff. We talked about that last week. There's lots of pictures on page six. Wait, can you guys hear this? Because I can hear it now. If you're in the chat, hold on. If you're in the chat, let me know if you can hear the audio from my stories because it changes a lot. If not, I'm going to, like, repeat what it says. Um, hi, socialite gossip. I got you. I see you. Okay, so we have we have Shayna in her reunion dress. We haven't gotten reunion. Um, we haven't got the reunion looks yet, but we do see Shayna, and she looks gorgeous. Also, I love this video because Allie Luber, James Kennedy's, Girlfriend is behind the camera and she's working the camera. I Googled her and I guess she is in media and I would love to like just chat with her sometimes because like obviously we're in the same industry. Do you guys hear this 
music right now or am I the only one? <laughs> I know Instagram can't hear it, but okay. So page six, um, again, they're just saying uh, Andy Cohen had to restrain Pump Rules cast during nuclear reunion. So everyone's like, who do you think it is? Who do you think it is? I told you, like, my prediction would be Lala and James. Like, that's not... Okay, you can't hear the audio. I have Jenny on my TV and I'm bouncing back and forth on my phone between IG and YouTube. Damn, you guys don't hear the music, but I hear the music. That sucks. Okay. So, more posts. What do I do? I turn this down? I can't even turn it down now. Now it's just, like, distracting to me. Um, okay, so Us Weekly reported last week that Raquel Levis says she's dropping restraining order against Shayna Shea after bringing legal papers to reunion taping. So we find out that that, like, did it, there was no legal standing in whatever Raquel brought to the reunion, and it was, like, pointless. Um, Dumas says spotted Tom Schwartz flying to Denver the morning after the VPR reunion. I assume he's going back to film Winter House. I hope that the only thing they talk about on Winter House is Scandal. Like, I just need that. And I I almost, oh my God, can you imagine? I'm picturing Amanda and Kyle hyping Schwartz up t- to be like, dude, he lied to you. He's ruining your business and blah, blah, blah. And then like Schwartz getting all amped up before the reunion. And then him being the one to like go after Sandoval. But... I guess that's not what happened. So, but see, again, this is like my mind starts when I see these things. I'm like, wait, what? My mind starts to race. Okay. So this is part of, again, I did my season five rewatch. I'm not going to go through all of it. I'm going to do a little recap before we get into um, the never before, never before seen footage. And then this week's episode. So Rate My Bravo has um, Jax just like during his interviews. He's totally living up this moment. And I kind of like, I'm here for it. I'm here for Jax just having a comeback. Um, So this ne- next clip of my stories is from Shenanigans. It's Shana's podcast. And she says, so Lala said to me, hold on, let me see. This week when I was telling her, my conversation with him went last week. This is someone who the last 13, 14 years of my life has been one of the most generous, giving kind, like anytime there was any fundraiser, if someone passed away, if anything, oh, she's starting to cry. He was the first one to donate, to do anything. And she's like, you know what, Shana? Randall used to do that too. So Shana's been really beating herself up over like being friends with Tom Sandoval for so long. Um, and you can go see that on her podcast. Um, by the way, another show I am watching, but like just not like it doesn't have my full attention is Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip 3, which I'm loving. I think it's so good. Um, okay, I'm going to get through this later. Again, I think I could. I have a picture of Jack's eating in drag from season five, but literally I had to put myself on a diet because of scan of all. Um, Katie is so gorgeous. Why doesn't she have a full like Rihanna Fenty beauty makeup line? She could be killing it right now. Um, okay. Real housemates in New York, pump rules. Lala's talking about this is after the reunion. She said she's exhausted. Don't forget, they film for five hours straight, which I know can be exhausting, but I almost feel like that seems like it's not that long when you think about other reunions that go to like midnight and things like that. So I don't know. This is going to be an interesting reunion. Also in season five, don't forget, that's how they introduced Summer House which is crazy because now they have Winter House because of Summer House, and now they have Below Deck people on Winter House. It's madness. And it all started from Vanderpump Rules, which originates from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. (sighs) Wild, 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 wild. Okay, so I am going to say something in Season 5 that 
was a huge red flag for Tom Sandoval. And I'm just annoyed that we watched this and nobody did anything. He literally pulled down his pants. Hold on, let me let me watch this. He goes, maybe if it's like a woman publisher, I can just have a meeting with her and be like this. And he pulls down his pants in front of this other woman. And Ariana's like, I am horrified. Can you please put your effing pants on? Dude. Okay, so right after this in season five is when um, there was a mass shooting, which is kind of not ironic, but like obviously we know there was another shooting this week and it's just this is not stopping. How many years ago is this? And this is still going on and it happened the night before Pride and it was at the Florida uh, gay bar and it was like, Tom Sandoval just did like the most horrendous and disgusting triggering thing. But then we have this shooting the next day. Like the next scene is the shooting and them thinking like, should we go to work? Like, what do we do? It was pride. It was very sad. And nobody mentioned this. And it's just very alarming because when I saw that scene, I was like, no way is this happening on television right now? Like, in 2023, if someone were to do that, there'd be like a class action lawsuit. And I know that because I worked with one of the largest insurance special specialty lines insurance companies in the world. And one of the cases that we use as an example for sexual harassment, where it was like a multi-million dollar lawsuit that the insurance handlers had to handle, and it was all because the CEO went into his office, called all the females into all the females in his that worked with him into his office. He pulled down his pants like that and said, go, you know, like start doing whatever. And like that was a lawsuit. Thankfully, there were like a bunch of women there to corroborate each other's stories. But like this kind of thing happens way more than we even know about we just they just do it behind closed doors when there's no witnesses and that's why it's just this is predator behavior i'm sorry this should not be acceptable shoot i just lost my spot okay also in season five this is the first time we see ariana and tom actually have an argument on camera and it was all because Ariana was approached by um, a publisher to do the cocktail book. And Tom is just so gross because he even says in this scene, he goes, he says, like, everyone's coming up to me and telling me or asking me, like, why is Ariana? Oh, my gosh. She just said, don't effing roll your eyes, you little effing bitch. <laughs> <coughs> And he, oh my gosh, Lala is even uncomfortable. Oh my God, his face. She goes, I just saw you roll your eyes over there. You can't even be a part of this conversation like a normal person. Ariana, do you understand that literally Jax, Katie, Shayna, everybody came up to me and they're like, why is Ariana doing cocktail book and not you? Everybody, I've been bartending 10 years at some of the busiest and most well-known places in the country with a reputation as grumpy cat, he interrupts. And she just says, oh, somebody's a bitter Betty. <sighs> oh, my gosh. That was bad. She goes, oh, and now they're letting it all out. She So Ariana clocked him. She had him. I think this honestly may be when she when he may have realized, like, he can't do this. He can't be like this with Ariana. But someone like Raquel, he probably can. Hi, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Lala. My fiancé is a stand-up guy talking about Randall that 
cracks me up still. Okay. So at the end of all of this, like, I just find it so boring of Tom Sandoval to be so, so into being extra and flaunting around how extra he is, but then doing the most basic thing he could possibly do, which is cheat on his fan favorite longtime girlfriend that everyone loves for this cheesy fangirl. And I'm not trying to like bully Raquel. Don't even come at me with that garbage because that is not what this is. I have empathy for Raquel. I think she's being manipulated by Sandoval. But how basic of him. He's basic. I just can't get over it. Oh, Face Reality also posted, um, I think this is from TMZ, Tom and Raquel break bread after VPR reunion show, clearly sticking together. Um, we'll find out in a minute um, that the place he took her to was the same place that he took Ariana for one of their anniversaries or something, which is just, oh my God. Um, let's see. Oh my gosh, James Kennedy. I This kid cracks me up so much. I could watch James Kennedy all freaking day. He is so, so, so funny. Hi, Ty Day Dave. How are you? Um, Just saying hi to my peeps. But this moment where James is like, if I was drunk, could I do this? It just made me, <laughs> it reminded me of Bridesmaids. Kristen Wiig, but then also it, remi it reminded me of that Reno 911 scene where <laughs> it's like the drunk driver is like, step, bump, step, bump, bump, and then does like, he's like, how about we add in this hitch kick and a barrel roll and a ha? She's like, that's pretty good. <laughs> Are you a dancer? And he's like, oh no, I'm just drunk. But I just love that. I thought that was so funny. Um, what else? What else? Oh my gosh. Yeah, so I remember watching um watching them try to sneak in the they really snuck in the first episode of Summer House into Vanderpump Rules and that was so annoying at the time and it was it's annoying now too. Like rewatching it, I'm like, "Are you kidding me?" Like it's funny to watch Kyle be drunk and be like, what's your name? Saucy? Saucy? St Stassi. <laughs> it's just so funny. But I don't know. Something about those back in those days with like Stassi and them going to Montauk. It was very triggering for me because I'm like, I just couldn't imagine them ever being in Montauk because that's where I used to hang out when I was younger and it was just, I don't know, like the fact that they didn't know what a clam bake was. And Kristen said, I read that it's when you, it was like the definition she gave was the same definition as like a hot box where you smoke weed in a car and roll up all the windows or whatever. She thought that was a clam bake. I just can't. I just can't. Oh, also in season five. Okay. So there's a lot going on in season five. I took some notes. I wish I had my scan of all notebook. But um, the thing with James is, let's think about James's perspective in this whole scandal. So he started, he was going to, he says in this reunion, season five reunion, he said, I'm, I'm, I was going to be on the show either way. Either I was going to live with Tom or I, was, or I was sleeping with Kristen. He was like, I already was on the show, whatever. So don't forget, he had this like friendship with Tom that went awry because of him sleeping with Kristen. And that was like a huge, that must have been a huge trigger for Sandoval when Kristen is the same girl that, that cheated on him with his friend. Like there must have been a lot happening with Tom Sandoval at this time I'm imagining but also with James Kennedy he's so young he's like 22 and this is all going down and now he's at a point like his goals are to 
be a DJ in LA and he, you know, wants to have a beautiful girlfriend and there's girls throwing themselves at James. He, I believe he, I mean, he admitted he cheated on Raquel in the beginning. And I, I think like he got carried away. I, I do feel like he, he did love Raquel. However, in season five, the, all the scenes where she comes in, like she seems a little bit scary in her scenes. Like go back and watch season five. There's only a couple scenes with her, but it just something about it gave me the, <laughs> gave me the creeps. So anyways, don't forget, though, James's parents were getting divorced right at the beginning of season five. And I think that combined with like this huge change in his life being on TV now and living out his dreams as a DJ in LA, DJ James Kennedy. And he's got Raquel who's like, I think they met on Instagram or something. And she's like, oh, I'm like your girlfriend. Like, I don't know, it just felt like the vibes I'm getting. And even in season five the reunion Kristen said I think you are easily manipulated she said it like twice so all these things I'm like whoa what is happening but um we see James in the beginning he's getting drunk at work that you know we have the famous scene of him yelling like pump teenies and like he fights with Ken and Lisa he's crying to them he gets fired and so that was kind of a wake-up call for him and he quits drinking <coughs> And there was a scene with this guy, Arthur, that I just loved. They went and got ice cream, and James was like, well, I don't drink anymore, so now I eat ice cream. <laughs> and actually, I remembered that from when that happened a while back originally, and that used to be my go-to, and I would think of James Kennedy when I was like, okay, I'm not drinking alcohol. I'll replace it with, like, sweets, though, like, whatever. And so I would do the same thing at one point. But then obviously you can't keep that up because, you know. Oh, but anyways, um, I really love this scene with Arthur because he's like giving James a second chance, but also like being there for him as like a true friend, not just like, oh, you're a F up and, you know, you, you suck or whatever. He's like, it sounds like drinking is a problem for you. And, he, and Arthur said, something like I subscribe to the philosophy that it's usually something deeper. Like, why are you turning to alcohol? And James even said himself, he's like, my parents are divorcing. And it just broke my heart because I know James Kennedy says and does vile, vile things, but I just cannot quit him because I feel like he has a good heart and he just doesn't have like, He's in this very toxic environment where there's pe manipulative people, obviously. Um, and he's there's so much temptation around him and he's trying to like do the right thing and be a good person. And it's like people push his buttons all the time and like he doesn't have the best childhood, it seems like. And I don't know why he is obsessed with fat shaming. I think that's weird, honestly. It feels sad to me. like. Who hurt you that that is such a trigger? Like, that's his go-to whenever he feels cornered. He just goes into fat shaming. And it's like, come on. I'm going on a tangent now because I just love James Kennedy. But <clears throat> I just, I want more of this kind of stuff on our screens. I want to see the character growth, the acknowledgement of, you know, messing up and taking ownership of your faults and being like, okay, I'm actually trying to do better. I have some self-awareness. And I don't know, James, I'm not sure why he's drinking again, but whatever, we'll get back, we'll get to that. <clears throat> yeah, so I don't know who this Arthur guy is, but I think that Bravo really missed out on an opportunity because he could have his own show. Like, I could see him mentoring his staff at whatever restaurant or venue he works at. Um, moving on. Okay. Um, this guy, Zach Falls Music, he made up a send it to Daryl whole 
song. It's great. Um, okay, another thing in season five, we see ugh, so the Bachelor Bachelorette party to New Orleans. That is like probably the most one of the most epic things ever <laughs> to happen on TV. But there's so much to unpack. I don't want to go into like all the detailed parts of like Katie and Schwartz's psyche. But Schwartz, we can clearly see he is a wussy pussy and he is easily controlled by people like Tom Sandoval. And I just wonder, you know, like, would things be different if Schwartz and Sandy never went on that path because and it all started I think because oh my god it's because of Tom Tom <laughs> it's because of Lisa Vanderpump the Tom Tom thing so at the end of the season at the wedding Lisa you know presents this opportunity to Tom and Tom for the restaurant Tom Tom and I think you know, with Tom Sandoval, season five, he was like doing modeling gigs with Joe Simpson. Like, I don't think Tom knew what he really wanted to do. And to have his girlfriend, who is a badass, who's like a powerhouse, for her to get approached for a book and him to not get it, you clearly see he's jealous. And like, I almost, and then his best friend is getting married and. This Tom Tom thing was almost a way, I feel like, for him to have, he like got a second wind of hope of like getting Schwartz away from Katie or something. Like it's a really weird dynamic. And like just watching that season, it, it's just bizarre. I would, I would like to go watch and like literally talk through every single scene but like we just don't have the time for that right now <laughs> maybe in a patreon or something but um because like their bachelor party up until this point people are saying like you're Ka tequila katie tequila katie meanwhile katie showed that she was able to like work on not bringing out that tequila katie side but schwartz went off and the drinking was just like I mean, he drank the whole time, so it's like, I don't know. I feel like Tom Sandoval just knows how to take advantage of people. All right, I'm going to move on. Um, oh, thank you to everyone for 8K this past week. I, I didn't think we'd ever get to 8K, so thank you so much. Um, and then also on Twitter, we also hit a 420 milestone, so. Which, by the way, 420 is coming up. I got to think of something fun to do. Um, okay, so at this point, I think this is like Friday or Saturday night, and Shadow and Bone 2 came out on Netflix, and I love Shadow and Bone 1. Like, I am a halfy. The Sun Summoner is a halfy. So I just like binged that because my Chromecast was working and Google's been tweeting me about this ever since. They're like, are you still having difficulty? And I want to be like, yes, but I moved on. And maybe you should too. I'm just not that into you, Google. Just kidding. But um, yeah, I'm not going to talk about Shadow and Bone other than it's amazing. I love it. I want to go rewatch it. It's so good. Okay. Reality Bites podcast. So they mention, um, I don't know who they're talking to, but essentially the takeaway I had from this was Raquel, and I had an inkling of this. I said this to many people in DMs. I had a feeling because I kept saying, oh, it started at boys night or after boys night. I go, I bet you that's the first time they had sex, actual sex. And I think that it's been inappropriate much longer but they're just counting that night as like the night that they like actually cross like really cross the line so I'm just like ugh, you know because if that's true we know Ariana was okay so somebody said that or in the in the podcast they said that 
Raquel's car was at Tom and Ariana's house. So Raquel drove with Tom to his house and they had sex in the car. And it was actually Ariana's car that he was driving that night. I don't know why Raquel's car was even there, but Ariana was inside mourning the loss of her beloved Charlotte. So this, if this is true, it makes me so angry and grossed out. But uh, Rate My Bravo caught, um, this is from TMZ and Backgrid, Ariana, she... Um, is about to leave for her Lifetime movie that she's going to be in. And I think they asked about Tom or Kel. She's like, I don't even give a crap, basically. Um, <clears throat> let's see. What else? What else? Oh, this was funny. Volter is upset. Reposted from someone on TikTok. Still jealous. <laughs> That's very funny. Um, it's somebody getting hit with a cork and um getting spill a drink spilled on them um when they go visit sir and they're playing like the intro because you know they're like popping bottles and drinks are floating all over anyways okay um <clears throat> shadow and bone still me every day since the scandal news broke marlo being tired yep that's me um i started my sugar detox and it's going well if anyone wants or needs any tips, feel free to message me. I actually am a certified health coach. Um, okay, so here we go. Pump rules. Check this out. This is a photo of Tom and Ariana in January celebrating their nine-year anniversary at Musso and Frank Grill in Hollywood, the same place he took Rachel after the reunion last Thursday. Gross, 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 gross. Um, we, just a side note on some weed. There's millions of dollars every year that are going to legal states that are being taken from non-legal states all because of weed and tax money. Just saying. That's a side note. Oh, my gosh. So this Joe Simpson moment was so creepy to me. I was talking to some people about this. Okay. Joe Simpson is the photographer for Tom Sandoval's big agency photo shoot where he wants to, like, pump up his modeling career or whatever and he looks so crazy in this outfit and like he brings shorts with him he's got all this like luggage of course you know with him and he's got like a case of Coors Light and I thought that was weird to go to a photo shoot with a case of Coors Light so then he goes in and Joe's there and he's like oh make yourself this is a bachelor pad make yourself at home like what the hell does that even mean it that just creeped me out to begin with right but then he's also like right here he goes okay so with women it's always like the boobs out and stuff he goes with guys stomach in dick out and like just the way he is I don't know something about him irks me and I honestly feel like Sandoval brought Schwartz as like a, another line of defense against Joe Simpson because he's creepy <sighs> I don't know what is this oh so in this one scene james and tom are talking tom's like i really want to make a name for myself yeah making a name for yourself uh by cheating uh you can go to my stories i have like so for one day i think it was monday i documented all the food that i ate so that i would not binge eat because my husband he bought this huge thing of oreos from sam's club so we have like like, it's so, so many Oreos and like, I just know I am not good at self-control. So like, if it's in the house, I need to really make a conscious effort not to eat it. And so as my, this isn't like punishment, but as my way to like have accountability. And I know that sounds like all in by Teddy, whatever, which I never watched her seasons on Beverly Hills, except for the last one. So I don't really know much about Teddy, but I do remember Jeff Lewis doing the all in by Teddy thing. And I was like, that looks, that's insane. And as a, a certified health coach, I'm like, that seems like not healthy um, and a little crazy. So just for one day, I was like, I'm just going to post what I eat so that I have accountability. And literally that alone 
has stopped my binges because my laziness and my displeasure of posting my food has trumped my desire to binge eat Oreos. So it worked because in the morning I was like, okay, ugh, this is already annoying. And then you'll see as the day goes on, I'm like taking more pictures of my food. I'm like, I effing hate this. I hate it so much. So yeah, that worked. All right, so I'm gonna move on. Oh my God, don't forget when Peter did a movie that Tom Sandoval was in and he had trouble reading his lines that were pretty basic. I mean, I shouldn't laugh because I mess up my lines too, but also don't forget during Katie's wedding, I forgot that Sheena was a bridesmaid and it's funny to watch um, Shayna's second wedding and how Shayna's like so mad at Katie and Katie's like not even going to the wedding. Meanwhile, Shayna was so unhappy as a bridesmaid during Katie's wedding. She like storms off in this one moment during uh, Katie's bridal shower or whatever. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so funny. Um, Oh, okay, side note, outside of Scandival, Real Housewives of New Orleans is supposed to be coming out, I guess, and all I have to say about that is justice for Southern Charm New Orleans because Tamika, like, I basically want the entire cast of Southern Charm New Orleans to be on this Housewives franchise, and I'm going to be mad if I don't see Tamika on there. Also, uh, the Kardashians dropped their trailer, I think, but honestly, I'm not really paying attention because of Scandal. Um, more proof of Tom being gross. Oh, uh, shameless plug. I have so many new clothes with tags on them that I was like, I'm just going to try to get rid of these first on Poshmark because I have already donated so much stuff. Um, and these are perfectly good clothes with the tags on them, never been worn, literally. So it's a deal for everyone. Um, oh, Allie Luber. So I reposted Allie and people are having some nasty comments about her. I like her and I like her energy. I don't think that she's like going to be easily manipulated by James. I don't even know if she'll stay with James. Like, I think James really loves her, but I don't know. Well, oh my gosh. I don't know if she likes James. Uh, the, I'll just leave it at that. Um, but whether they're together or not, I like them both. So I wish them both the best. Um, okay, so bye wig, hello drama. The Vanderpump Rules cast went crazy on Raquel Levis and Tom Sandoval at season 10 reunion. The cast was out of control and Lala Kent and James Kennedy went crazy. So if the rumors are saying that like the least likely people were the ones who had to be restrained and it turns out to be Lala and James, I'm annoyed by that because we I could have told you that. Um, James took on Tom Sandoval while, while Lala took on Raquel Levis and they both just lit them on fire and burned them alive with their shade. It would be impossible to begin filming next season and act like the bombshell affair never happened and Tom and Raquel are still together, the source explains. Claiming that Raquel 28 was temporarily on the chopping block to get fired from the Bravo series because no one wanted to film with her next season. Bravo has yet to renew Vanderpump rules for season 11, but the source notes the ratings have been incredible amid the buzz of Scandival. Yeah, they're going to definitely have another season. Um, okay. Carter. <laughs> Carter's role in season five is not talked about enough. I kind of liked Carter in season five. Um, this Bachelor and Bachelorette party, though, is just so hard to watch. The guys were crying so much, and Tom Sandoval is crying to Schwartz like, oh, you're a battered wife, you're a battered wife, after he just spent an entire day literally scaring Schwartz from one of his biggest fears while Tom Sandoval is laughing and giggling. So don't say you're worried about him being a battered wife. It sounds like you're worried that he's going to be someone else's battered wife because Tom Sandoval it does not treat 
Schwartz that great. I mean, yeah, he does like silly stuff like, oh, let's get matching helmets and you can ride in my sidecar. But does he ever say, here, I'll ride in your sidecar, Tom Schwartz? Think about that. Um, I had to take a break from, oh, here's the picture. <laughs> I took a break from uh, season five because I was too busy and I was like, I can't like just... I have to focus on this because it's too much. But look, here's the dress. The dress. Bella Boss, I think. Um, all right. I'm going to keep going. I am rewatching older seasons of Pump Rules, but does anyone remember when Kristen Dowdy slept with her beer? <laughs> that was just kind of funny. Oh, my gosh. So on this bachelorette party... Saucy takes them on like a murder tour and Kristen was like obsessed with saying that all the men who were murdered were cheaters and it just made me think back to the show Cheaters where I I really strongly feel like Kristen Dowdy could revive that show and be the host. My only concern is that Joey Greco the season one or the first host of Cheaters he was like stabbed on camera during a confrontation so if they were to revive cheaters, they have to put better safety and security measures in place. But like her determination, like it was Schwartz's bachelor party while he is dressed up in drag. And Kristen's like, you have to admit that you cheated with the girl in Vegas. Like, and the funny part about it is like, of all people, Kristen cheated on her boyfriend boyfriends before so her determination to out cheaters is just so funny to me <laughs> Cracking up. okay so what date is this the 28th so tuesday this is when i went live oh because i had to talk about this bachelor bachelorette party it's so wild um go check out the live i went live for like 30 minutes but also that's when the tmz um, video of Tom Sandoval came out and ugh, my biggest takeaway, two biggest takeaways. One, I feel like he purposely is trying to get like some kind of luggage sponsorship because he like tried to act like his luggage was so hard to get into his truck, which was weird. And he like, he had so much luggage, so much luggage all the time. Actually, this might be a good fit for him. <laughs> it can revive his life by sponsoring luggage um but yeah the funny thing is like he kept saying hindsight is 2020 hindsight is 2020 as like a way to get out of being like responsible for what he did almost but it was funny because the th he said it so many times and then the third time he just like turns around to the <laughs> to the camera guy josh i think that's his name he's like do you know what hindsight means <laughs> and then he goes on with his smug attitude, of course. And it's just like, oh my gosh. It totally looks staged. Because like, if you look at the beginning, it almost looks like the camera guy was like, all right, ready? Okay. And Tom's like standing there waiting. And then when he said, okay, he like goes and grabs a thing. I'm just guessing. Oh my gosh, clips of the bachelor bachelorette party. Ariana looks pretty good in her drag. I'm not going to lie. But, oh my gosh. And I have to say, Tom Sandoval did do, he does do good drag. Like, I don't hate him for that. His drag is probably the best part about him, I would say. But Kristen is so wild. She's like insisting. When Tom is in like no no like he's so hammered he's in no state to like have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation about his cheating or whatever but it was pretty messed up like so this tequila tom this is the tom that i think is the real tom he called kristen a a bitch and uh i think he called her like a slut or i don't know whatever like the way he was just, it was awful. And there were times that he did the same to Katie and it was like really, really hard to watch. So this whole like 
Tom Schwartz is a really nice guy. Like, I was fooled. I was fooled. I thought he was, like, the sweetest guy, whatever. But now that I'm, like, watching all this back, it's like, he's kind of a dick. Um, what else? Oh, another Dumas. This is reposted by Walter is upset. Tom and Rachel were at Pat's cocktail cocktail lounge in Valley Village. Oh my God, I'm like Tom Sandoval. I can't do my lines. Tom and Rachel were at Pat's cocktail lounge in Valley Village. They were with friends drinking whiskey shots and Miller Lights. Tom was crying when we walked in. There were five other people in the bar while we were there. He, I feel like he cries all the time. Whatever. So, yeah. Um, emotional Tom Sandoval wants to make it work with Raquel Levis after affair. Oh, my God. Tom has never been alone and single. Like, even though he may be emotionally checked out of a relationship, he's never been, like, alone. And I kind of feel like that's what he needs right now. But... It's love. It's love. I mean, honestly, if they don't wind up together for the rest of their lives, this is the ultimate tragedy. Restraining order hearing is still scheduled for Wednesday. Media request to record is denied. Boo! That came from Face Reality. Um, Ryan Bailey does really good impressions of Tom and Raquel and Lala's vagina, so... I don't know if that's appropriate, but uh, go <laughs> check that out. Um, oh, like I mentioned earlier, so yeah, there was another shooting and, um, a bunch of Bravo content creators, brands by Bravo, Bravo and cocktails, Bravo, Bravo, ducking, Bravo, Bravo, O, O, M, G, Christine, Bianca Villa, Dame Golly, Face Reality 16, it's P, Cav, Cashmere, Danny, Morgan, P, Talks, Real Moms of Bravo, the Bravo Docket, the Prima Donald, the Zen Blonde, they all are doing a fundraiser for every town for, for gun safety. And they've raised $4,600 and their goal was 3000 So thank you to everyone. I just, I don't want to <clears throat> spend too much time on this topic because that's not what this platform is for. And also I want to use it this platform in Bravo as almost as an escape from these real realities that we are seeing every day. These are tragedies and I just, we need to, I don't know what to do, but I'm going to move on. Um, Jackson, Brittany had their, um, Oh, by the way, my IG live is going to end. So just come over to YouTube. I'm still, like on probation, I guess, because of whatever happened during the beginning of Scandal. <laughs> so this is about to go off soon. Bye, IG. Okay. Jackson Brittany got their um launched their new podcast. I didn't listen to it yet. I didn't hear that there was anything like groundbreaking going on. Um Oh, Ariana. So this is from Real Vanderpump. Ariana does a little video where she's on set. She looks super amazing, obviously. But it says Vanderpump Rules star Ariana Maddox takes a break during filming of Buying Back My Daughter. Oh, that's the name of the movie. I didn't know that. In which Ariana plays a cop to share a link to some amazing merch. So go check out Ariana's merch. <clears throat> Um, this is from CC Loves You, um, and this was on Jeff Lewis. I guess Lala was saying, like, Tom and Raquel were caught under the bed sheets together, and people are just like, oh, they're just close or whatever. That's crazy. That's so nuts. Um, ugh. These, I don't know how these people drink so much. I would literally be vomiting. I would have to. I would be a mess if I did whatever it is that they're doing. But I would love for our future to have 420 consumption lounges with cool, fun stuff like this where you like, I don't know, they did like some shots and like lit it on fire and like whatever. Like that stuff can be fun sometimes. Um, but I would not want to do it um, with alcohol. 
Um, I also have my Amazon shop up. Go check my the link in my bio and also in the show notes. And I'm going to go through my scan of all guide. But here's um, something that you can get from my Amazon store. This is a raw cones. Um, it's like a pre-roll filler. You put in six cones. You put in like half your stash. You, you know, like shake it up or whatever um, to pack it down. You pull out the, the little packer thing in the middle and you poke it. And then you put in the rest and then you shake it again. And then you have your pre-rolls. Because if anyone else uses pre-rolls like I do, like right now... Right now, I've been using these Blazy Susans cones, and to pack each one individually is kind of annoying. <laughs> um, oh, Pump Rules posted this. So Joe is Avi, Team Raquel. Source Anonymous, if you don't know who Joe is, she was mentioned early on. So she, it says, I like everything about, or I like everything about you, everything, Raquel Levis, and it's from Joe which is Schwartz's roommate or whatever. Okay, so finally, we, this is yesterday now. Um, <laughs> James Kennedy, I just love him. Oh, this is Jane Project. So this is um, really good. I just want to give a shout out. They have a healing happy hour, healing after sexual assault on April 26th at 4 p.m. I just um, love, oops, I keep hitting my microphone. I love this is Jane Project, and um, I like that they are helping to um, helping people to heal after sexual assault. I think I've talked about sexual assault on this show a couple times, but I'm still on my own healing journey, so I don't talk about it that often. But um, I just wanted oh look, it says consumption encouraged. See, that's cool. So I just wanted to give a shout out. Okay, I need to talk about this real quick because in season five. We see Tom Schwartz's triplet brothers, you know, for the wedding and stuff like that. And we've seen them a couple times before, but I don't remember them ever saying that they're like special needs or anything like that. And Jax was saying that he's like, why do I have to take care of these grown men? They're 30 years old. They live in the same room at home with their parents. They share a, a pay as you go cell phone. And I'm just like, what? I could not understand. And people are like, oh, I think that they may be, you know, whatever. And so I just want to apologize if that's the case because I, and I also feel like Bravo should have, feel some kind of responsibility to like not lead us to believe that these two are just, or these three, these triplets are like incompetent. Like this is, that's not cool. And I'm like, I was kind of annoyed. I'm like, why don't they make that a little more clearer instead of making it seem like, like Jax was asking him, oh, do you have clean underwear? And like, did you take a shower? He's like, oh, they missed their flight. They, you know, like we have to dress them. And I had to pick out their, Sandoval was saying he picked out their clothes for the rehearsal and for the wedding. And I'm like, what? I don't understand. So I don't know. It just, this is my public apology if if that's the case. I, I don't even know, but I'm going to move on. Um, I love that Katie talked about taking edibles the day before her wedding, and she was so calm. And she said very clearly that for her wedding day, she made sure she did all the work ahead of time so that she could relax and enjoy her day. And I love that because after seeing Shana's wedding, I was like, this is why I hate weddings because of Shana's wedding. But then seeing Katie's, it was like, she just seemed very, much, you know, like much more relaxed and everything. I was like, okay, I can dig this. Um, <clears throat> oh my gosh. So Bravo by Gaze posted the first seven minutes of um, last night's new episode. Wait, I'll, I'll get to that after because there's more things. So Brock posts, you know, he's sitting here waiting for court and this is real. There is real people with real problems in need of real services that help in serious situations at LifeWire Org at Future Without Violence. I really like Brock's new haircut, too. Um, I'm going to move on from here. Okay, so then Vanderpump's, Vanderpump Rules Party caught Shana coming out of court. 
She looks great. The first thing I noticed right away, I was like, oh, no, the bottom of her pants. Oh, no. I hate when that happens, when you have, like, nice pants on that are tailored and then they're dragging and, oh, just so annoying. Let's skip over this. All right, Queens of Bravo posted, after Raquel's restraining order against Sheena was officially dismissed, Sheena's lawyer fires back with a scathing statement. Shay's attorney, Nima Romani, tells E.T., this isn't reality TV. This is the real world, and Rachel's actions have real consequences. Rachel filed a false police report, a false medical rec report, and a frivolous petition for a restraining order. Shayna didn't punch Rachel. Rachel didn't get a black eye. Shayna pushed Rachel, but only after Rachel grabbed her wrist, and Rachel did not suffer a concussion. That's a pretty bold thing to say on the record for her attorney. Um, he adds, when Rachel realized that she would lose in court and that she couldn't just drop it, she decided to not show up at all. We were prepared to expose Rachel's lies, but instead she will have to live knowing that she betrayed two of her best friends, Shayna and Ariana. Instead of accepting responsibility for her actions, Rachel shamefully tried to misuse our justice system to shift blame to Shayna. We are happy that Shayna is now vindicated. Um, apparently, <clears throat> um, she, she went, um, live and promoted her eyelashes. I don't know if it was on the way to court or after court, but I did see that people were saying, um, that it was dismissed without prejudice, which I believe, and I'm not a lawyer, Law is a hobby of mine. I would love to be a judge at Petty Claims Courts. <laughs> that would be so fun. Judge Jenny. Um, but my understanding is that Raquel could re or like try to press charges again with the same information at a later date. I don't know if there's like a time limit on that or not, but Go check out Vanderpump Rules Party. Um, they have the information. I went live for about five minutes yesterday to talk about it. Um, um, it's a Bravo World reposted Lala. I think she was doing like an Amazon Live or something. And Lala said security got involved at the uh, reunion. Bravo TV reposted, don't come for me unless I send two announcements for you tomorrow. We already got one, but I'm hoping one of them has to do with Skandaval. Um, Shayna was so good. I just have to get, Shayna is MVP. She really used this moment the best way possible. She, you know, shot down the claims. She reminded people why Raquel even did this. She even rattled off, you know, the organizations, the nonprofit organizations that support, you know, real cases that where real people need real help. Um, she killed it. And I'm just so mad at the fact that her pants got all wet. All because of Raquel. Just saying. This is from the Bravo Chicks. Shayna winning in court today. Um, oh, another side weed note is um, New York's first women-owned dispensary opens tomorrow, which is today. I need to, it's about time. I need to go check that out. Okay, so this is a long one, okay? I'm going to try to be quick with this. By way, hello, drama. This comes from Reddit. And I didn't listen to Lala's podcast, so, and these are supposed to be the recap notes. I don't know who wrote this and I don't know if they're reliable. So, but I also don't have time to go listen to Lala's podcast and make notes myself. So I'm going to read it to you guys. Lala's new podcast episode, the one where they film the pump rules reunion recap. First bullet point. Lala said that her brain is still fried from the reunion Two, Lala purchased her first home in Palm Springs. We know that next to Shana. Three, Lala said she wasn't directly affected when it comes to Tom and Raquel. She talked about how Ariana, Shana, James and Katie were directly affected by it. For Lala, these were two people who she could never stand, but she stomached them barely. Lala was triggered for many reasons, took her back to her own situation. Sandoval reminds him, reminds her of Randall. 
discussed how Sandoval has put a lot of projection on Lala for many years, and Raquel projected on her a lot this season. We saw that Mistress Bimbo vibes. <sighs> Lala says she blacked out during the reunion. She only cried one time during the reunion, and we will see why. She was in fight mode the whole time. Questions that Jessica asked. Um, I think that's Lala's podcast host or co-host. Were Lala and James the loudest, most emotional, angry ones? Yes, that is true. Ariana was relatively calm. She was calm. She stayed seated the whole time. She was dragging them with her words the whole time. She was empowered. Did anyone get physical or almost physical and security had to step in? Yes, that did happen. Lala was not involved in this. Lala thinks the reunion is going to be crazy for people to watch. It was a mind beep. She had a group of people not telling her that's not very nice, Lala. Instead, this group were to tooting away with her on the same train during a break Schwartz said to Lala that Sandoval feels this that and the other about you your big talk but you don't act and Lala said if I were to act on it on what I say and back up what I say then I'm catching a case and I'm not that no one is putting me in the slammer for my words last week during the podcast they talked about how they wanted to talk about other things that happened this season and now just Sandoval Lala said once they got there though None of them could keep that out of their mouth because the whole season doesn't even matter because of this one thing. Lala always thought Schwartz was a decoy. He still claims he just found out. Ugh! I'm like analyzing every scene now. Oh, God. What happened? The second that they arrive at the reunion... Wait, did I... I skipped one. Says audience will be shocked. Everyone was triggered when they walked into, into the reunion. It was within seconds that it was explosive. James and her could not stop. Lala was out of her seat. The second that they arrive at the reunion, cameras are on them. Lala got there at 8.30 a.m. They left the reunion around 7 p.m. Lunch break, what, was it the entire cast sitting together? And then on the other side, was it Sandfall and Raquel? Lala doesn't know where Schwartz, Sandoval, or Raquel ate lunch. The rest ate together and cameras were on them. Clearly, Sandoval was upset about something. Yeah, and we saw that there, the cameras were on them outside, too. So they must have been rolling the entire time. Oh, my God. Did the camera, does the camera crew get a break? Or do they switch out? We, we need, like, nonstop footage going. Um, Sandoval and Raquel went out to the same place and Sandoval and Ariana went to for their anniversary in January. Okay, we just read that. Talked about how friends saw Raquel and Sandoval under the covers once and just thought, oh, that that they are close. They wouldn't be doing this in plain sight. A lot of people asked Lala after if she called Ariana or anyone else out for not seeing red flags the way most of them called you out at last year's reunion. Did you talk about how she hooked up with Sandoval while he was with Kristen? She said she didn't bring that up and no one else did either because that didn't feel good. Lala said last year she was victim shamed, but she didn't want to do that to Ariana. Ariana didn't see the red flags because she didn't expect her friends or the person she is sleeping next to to do this. Rumors that Sandoval convinced Raquel that this was okay and that him and Ariana had an open real relationship. Lala would believe this if Raquel and Ariana weren't best friends. Ariana made it very clear that they were not in an open relationship. And I do remember that too. She tweeted about it. <laughs> so at this point, Lala kind of goes all over the place with her words, but it kind of sounds like she is saying that it's wild that Raquel was banging Tom and then also listening to Ariana confide. This person wrote that wrong. Confide in her about Ariana and Tom's relationship, which I think we will see some of that this season. I don't know. Again, Lala was all over the place talking about this. The cast hasn't seen the finale episode, so anything that they filmed and cameras picked back up, she hasn't seen. They saw what was supposed to be the original finale. Lala said that had this not have happened, Raquel would have won this, this season. People's heart would go out to her and think she has found her voice. Oh my God, there's more. <laughs> Lala said there was a time years ago when they were in Vegas, and this is when James called Lala the C word. James and Raquel left the table and Lala's mom said that she did not like that Raquel, that she got a bad vibe and that she moves like a snake, said that her mom usually loves everyone. There was a week of or two where Lala and Raquel were really getting along and were bonding over their traumas. People talk about why I told her about James and I. You guys are going to die at the reunion with what she says. You're going to die. I looked at James and was like, skirt. Hold up. She is effing insane. 
Jessica talked about how she saw Raquel at Ocean's first birthday, even though Raquel wasn't invited. Kyle, who I'm guessing is Jessica's boyfriend, Raquel went up to him and talked to him for a long time. And Jessica was like, wow, she never talks to me. And I've seen her a few times. And Kyle afterwards was like, oh, my God, she is so nice. So they talked about how she seems to seek validation from men. Lala thinks there is 14 or 15 episodes and then the reunion. Again, no one can give a concrete answer, even though they've watched episodes. LOL. Oh, my God. That was so much. Uh, I don't even know what to say. Also, the Bravo docket, legal brief, the VPR restraining order out now. In this first legal brief episode, our short form content, we discuss why Raquel could not withdraw her temporary restraining order before the hearing date and the nuances of restraining orders generally. As stated in the episode and as it played out today in court, the easiest way to withdraw and not further seek a restraining order is to not appear for the hearing. Oh, so I'm going to have to check this out from the Bravo docket. I haven't got time to yet, but so does that mean like she did the right thing? I don't know. See, this is the dress that is part of the same collection as this uh, collaboration that Chena did with Bell Boss. I wonder if she has it anywhere on her page. I'm sure she has it somewhere. Once I find it, I'll post it. Um, okay, what else? Oh my gosh. Nightmares! Um, so Josh, <laughs> TMZ, asked Shana on the way out. He's like, so you think you'll ever, ever be friends with Raquel again? And Shana gave a hard no. Hell no, she said. Um, okay, so one thing I want to take note of in season, during my season five rewatch is that they resume filming three months after wrapping season five filming just for Shana's divorce. So keep that in mind. So when I saw that and I posted this, this is yesterday at 610. I was like, wait a minute. Shana just had court. They just filmed the reunion. But we need this footage. We need Shana's interview after court. And then we also, right before I started this live, I heard that there are cameras at Raquel's apartment complex or something. So they may be filming again. Like, this is never going to end. This is never going to end. <sighs> Just this serve from Shana. Okay, so yesterday was the new episode, episode eight, by invitation only. Lisa and Ariana plan a surprise bridal shower for Shana while James makes it his mission to score Allie an invitation to the wedding. Raquel and Schwartz take their flirting to the next level and the group travels to Cancun to celebrate Brock and Shana. Okay. More fuel for your nightmares. Oh, I love that we're comparing um, the Nima that Raquel ordered from Shaw's of Sunset and the Nima that works for Shana because I never liked Nima from Shaw's. I find him to be so cringy, so cheesy, and when I heard that him and Raquel were dating, I was like, good, good. They should. They should date and, like, be together. But I guess he ghosted her. Um, also, up in Adam Live and the Emily D. Baker, who is a lawyer, I believe, um, talked about the restraining order as well. So you can go check that out. Um, so funny. Season five, Lala comes into the reunion. And she's only, like, part-time. She, like, quits Sir during this time. But she calls... Stassi, Katie, and Chris, and all mean girls. And I think that's so funny because, like, we're watching Lala actually be, like, a mean girl. Um, so, yeah. Okay, now I'm going to start jumping into the never-before scene. Okay, so the first never-before scene footage is um, at the Mondrian when Raquel and Charlie crash boys' night. And we got, okay... Just, you're going to have to watch the video because there, you can see how Raquel is fixed in on Sandoval. Like, he walks away with Schwartz to do this, like, weird proposal thing and whatever. They have, like, a meet cute moment, but you see Raquel, and if you're on YouTube watching, 
Watch right here. Look, she's standing up. Look at her staring. Oh, my gosh. So then we see Schwartz and Sandy. They go over by themselves and they're like, whatever. Sandoval like proposes to Schwartz to try to make him feel better about being divorced or whatever. I don't know. Um, the next scene that's um, never before seen footage is when Allie and James are doing their reading and um, she says she got a reading like two days before she met James and they said that the, the person who gave the reading was like, you're going to meet your twin flame. And this guy who does her reading is talking about twin flames and he says like... Um, you guys are meant to be together to create something. And I don't know what that means, but I don't know if, I don't know if they're meant to be together. I really like Allie though. And I don't think it has anything to do with Allie. I think it's might be on James, but anyways. Okay. So this is not a never before scene, but this really bothered me. So in last week's episode, we know that Raquel had just slept with Sandoval, allegedly, after boys' night. And then Raquel stops James in this scene. Look, she's like, James, James. She's like, oh, I just want to make sure you're okay. You know, she goes, hi, I noticed. Wait, what did she say? Hey, James, hey. Hi, I just noticed that you left the laundry on early. Oh, oh yeah, I just wanted to check in with you and make sure that you're okay. I'm good. I'm good. It's not like my girlfriend was like there. You know, I don't want her to ever feel uncomfortable in that sense. But like, we'll be around each other and I'm good and whatever. I don't know. I just thought this was so crazy because why is she checking? Okay, this is my theory. I think she was checking in on James because subconsciously, she knows she just crossed the line with Tom Sandoval and it's almost like there's no going back really. And like she has been disturbed over the fact that James moved on so quickly and he's been very clear in his communication that he's moved on. He's like, I have a girlfriend. I love her. She's the love of my life and la la la. And you know, Raquel's obviously getting upset by this. I almost feel like her stopping James was another her it was like her giving him another chance to be like to say something that would maybe give her a glimmer of hope or something so that she could stop what she's doing but by him saying like oh I'm a girlfriend and la 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 whatever I think in her mind that gave her more validation in her mind to be like well that's over. I'm doing this now with Sandoval. And I think that gave her almost like permission in her mind. I'm just <sighs> psychoanalyzing as a hobby right now. But um, the other, um, oh, is this the, hold on, real time. Oh my God. Uh, sorry for the dead air. I'm like shocked right now. Bravo's second announcement today is Martha's Vineyard is a new destination for a hot girl summer house. Hashtag summer house MV premieres May 7th. And this cast is fire. I have chills. Oh my gosh. That is a really nice surprise. Did we know this? We did not know this. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Oops. Sorry, I have to share this in my stories. Martha's Vineyard? I've been there once when I was in high school with my friend. Wow, I'm excited. This is exciting. Martha's Vineyard. Oh my gosh. The collared shirts, the sweaters. Oh my gosh. Okay, moving on. I'll come back. 
Sorry. Martha's Vineyard. I'm shook. Hold on. Okay, let me go back to the never before seen footage. Wow, this is a lot. Okay. Oh, so shout out to Blake from Blonde Hair, Black Heart, because I think he's the one who started this rumor about Tom and Raquel making out at Coachella. That whole thing, I'm pretty sure, started from Blake, and I think it's hilarious. And quite frankly, someone needs to give him the credit for it. I've been saying it. Like, I, I'm pretty sure this was Blake who did this. But um, that's... Raquel's taking a picture with the guy who um, she allegedly, like, made out with or whatever. Um, and even Schwartz was like, oh, my mom even heard about it, which was kind of crazy. Um, so then this scene, oh, Ariana is in this scene, and it's uh, Schwartz made some banana syrup or something. I don't know. I wonder if they're using that at the bar. Um, but again, here's the Mistress Bimbo vibes. Um, okay, so now I'm going into last night's episode. It's been or like an hour and a half in, so I'll try to be quick. But James's father, I was really disappointed. I thought maybe like his mom was a mess and like his father just like was maybe no normal-ish. But like after last night's scene, like I didn't realize his father father is a bigger mess than his mother and it like makes me feel even more empathetic towards James Kennedy like these are your parents his dad was like oh it's like a how can you not DJ and drink like wow I I'm seeing James's father it almost makes me like proud of James for where he is <laughs> considering you know but I'm gonna move on um this is so funny, the contrast between Shayna and Lala talking about, you know, welcoming Allie into the group. And Ariana's like, I asked Raquel if it was okay. Like, again, Ariana is, like, extending herself to Raquel, and Raquel never deserved it. Um, Shayna's like, I really like Allie, and I would love to get to know her more as long as it doesn't hurt Raquel's feelings. And Lala's like, I really don't give a beep if it hurts Raquel's feelings. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, the best moment, though, of the night of the episode was Lala. She's like, bringing a child into the world is no joke. <laughs> stopping my legs right now and James is like oh my god if Brock could bring a baby in the bloody world <laughs> I don't... he's so funny and this is no shade towards Brock because I actually freaking love Brock I am literally wearing Brock's homebody pants I love these are my favorite black leggings I wear them almost every day <laughs> Oh my God, if Brock could bring a baby in the bloody world. He's so funny. <laughs> uh, okay, so I always thought that Brock was misunderstood in his first season. Everyone, and it's because of Lala, it's Lala's fault that she was like, this man hasn't seen his kid in four years or whatever. It's like, dude, chill the F out. You, it's... I mean, she finally copped up to it last night and was like, she cried about it, so it made me feel like she was actually sincere. But, like, you, it's not always black and white, and especially in custody cases. Like, I know I have a blended family, and I was a single mom at one point, and, like, my daughter's father lived in a different state because of our work situation. And, like, I wouldn't say that he was, like, like just a deadbeat you know like I don't know I just didn't like how Lala came at him so hard and it's unfortunate that she had to learn the hard way and that things are not always like you know so cut and dry but I do think like there were things that Brock said just from like my experience and having a blended family and being a single mom and like having step parents involved and like all that stuff like 
there were certain things that Brock would say that broke my heart that made me think that there was parental alienation being in, like involved in this meaning and I'm not and I don't know any of this but I almost feel like the mother of his children may have like told him like you don't deserve to be a part of their life or something you know and like and I don't know all the details and I'm just trying to give him like the benefit of the doubt because it's hard for me to grasp the concept of this guy who seems to be so such a good dad with Summer, like, it's hard for me to believe that, like, he just got up and walked away and was like, F you. Like, I don't think that's the case at all. And so I think people gave Brock a really hard time last season, but just saying, I always liked him. And I met him at BravoCon, and I told him that. <laughs> I liked him. <laughs> I don't think I said I liked him, but I was like, I love your homebody leggings. They're my favorite. Um... And James, James is, oh God, he's so funny. But last night he's like, he really wanted Allie to go to the wedding and I don't blame him. And I kind of love that about him. Although I wish it wasn't about Raquel. I wish it was just about Allie. And a lot of this, we could see he's, it's very, it's cringy because he's making comments about Raquel or like, oh, Raquel, did you get a swim up pool? And like right in front of Allie, that's so that is such a James Kennedy thing to do. But it's also such a dumb guy thing to do, I feel like. And it's like, dude, that doesn't make you look good. It makes you look bad. But that's why I'm like, ugh, I think James is just, he he just needs a little help. But, um, shoot. All right, let me go on. Oh, so the scene with Raquel and Schwartz was so weird because Schwartz is like trying to like talk to her or whatever about his feelings. He's like, he said like they were tight and she kind of like laughed at him in a sarcastic way. And I'm like wondering if it, if she's doing that as in like a, yeah, right. You and I are nothing kind of way or like, because you know that I'm effing your best friend or if it's like, sure whatever like I don't know something about it felt weird and then he says um she's invited to the opening and she laughs again as if that's like obvious and I'm just like I don't know this whole that whole scene just like really creeped me out <laughs> but um that scene triggered James which again it's like oh my gosh I don't know if Allie and him are gonna last because like he's clearly like he's like vengeful or something towards Raquel and it's like dude you have a new girlfriend move on like your new girlfriend is amazing and I I don't know maybe he feels like he didn't want to lose her because he knows she's so amazing and he wants to like be with Allie even though he knows he's not done grieving his relationship with Raquel I'm not sure but the fat shaming needs to end and I need to know who hurt James Kennedy why is he so obsessed with fat shaming whenever he feels like there's no other option for him like he just immediately goes into fat shaming mode every time and he thinks it's so funny and I don't get it like we need to move on from that but this is funny from so bad it's good with Ryan Bailey he <laughs> I think DJ James Kennedy would be a great weight loss coach for me because James goes you look desperate and absurd go hit the treadmill you effing fat beep oh my god so bad so bad um, so like I've said many times, I hate weddings, but I actually, once they got to Shayna's like, uh, venue, the resort, I was like immediately feeling it. I'm like, you know what? I feel like I would like this wedding. I would like to attend because everyone had their own space. Shayna was very on top of like the itinerary, what's going on. And like, it seemed organized enough for me to enjoy myself. So not hating it. But I did think it was super funny that Shayna went out of her way to get Katie removed from the preferred club list and move her to another tower. That level of petty is just too good. And you know, petty is my favorite color. Um, So somebody, okay. So Lala brings Christina Kelly 
to Shayna's rehearsal dinner. I don't know. A welcome dinner. And um, I thought that was weird. But then people are saying, because don't forget, Christina Kelly is there as a birthday gift from Katie, who is on a dinner date with Schwartz to celebrate this, the closing on their house, I guess, or whatever. And so Christina, that means Christina Kelly has nothing to do for dinner, obviously. She could have done nothing or gone to dinner by herself. But I guess somebody said that the way the dinner works, because it's all inclusive, that anyone can just like show up or whatever. I don't know that like you just come as a group, but I still feel like Lala or Christina should have been like, hey, is it okay if I come? Um, so that was kind of weird. But we do see at this dinner that Ariana and James get into it because James said one of Brock's friends like was drunk and went up to him and like grabbed him. And like apparently James like body checked the guy and was like, you know, not cool or whatever. And James kept insisting to Ariana. He's like, yeah, like that guy wasn't cool though, right? And she's like, you weren't either. And he's like, yeah, but he wasn't. She's like, I don't like what he did and I don't like what you did. And she's just like, this energy is like everything I need from Ariana right now. But I did feel bad for Allie because she, her boyfriend's getting yelled at and she did walk away from the table. But then instead of James taking accountability for it, he's like, oh, now my girlfriend's leaving as if it's somebody else's fault. Like, dude, you need to take responsibility for your part in this and like, I could tell, like, he, I don't think Aria, I mean, James should have shut it down way sooner, but he has a hard time shutting things down. He lets things continue to go instead. So, um, shout out to Bravo, love baby underscore new. Her account got hacked, and <sighs> I know that sucks to start from the beginning. So, go follow her uh, new account. Byway hello drama statement from Raquel's rep. A rep for Levis tells ET Shayna and her attorney were notified from the reunion to emails that Raquel wasn't moving forward with the RO. The court was notified by Raquel's counsel that we were not attending and are not moving forward. And we had filed the paperwork requested by the court clerk, which is stamped received. They add their attendance was to grandstand, which was predictable, but at least he finally admits there was physicality involved and Raquel stands by her initial statement that Shayna punched her in the face supported by photos of her bruised eyebrow bone and slash eyebrow not the dark circles that Shayna is trying to deflect towards oh my gosh I didn't read that yet <laughs> this is last night Shay's okay statement from Shayna's attorney Shay's attorney Nima Ramini tells ET this is it oh we already read that okay wow okay Oh, another cringy part. Bravo by Betches posted uh, Ariana last night was like, oh, I get Tom all to myself. Nothing to get in the way. Meanwhile, Raquel's there and they're hooking up. But, huh, okay. I already mentioned this before, but if you're still with me, make sure go, you go and get your Scandal Spiral notebook from bravoandblaze.com because this is where you can keep all of your... Your Vanderpump Rules notes in one place because this is a lot. There's a people are triggered, people are angry. There's a lot going on. And I did something for you guys. Hold on, let me find it. <laughs> I don't have it in front of me right now. Shoot. Let me see. Let me finish the rest of these stories and then uh Oh, here it is from By Wig Hello Drama off of Reddit. Unverified tea. So this is not facts, people. My girlfriend that lives in Rachel's building said they are loading in production equipment at the moment. Paparazzi and bodyguards are in the front entrance. I thought they were wrapped. See, I told you. I told you. Oh, this also. I forgot about this one from the Talk of Shame. Raquel Levis has sleepover at Tom Sandoval's. I had a suspicion this was going to happen because Ariana's out of town for her movie. And we know that Tom is like, if she's uncomfortable, she can leave. Oh, my God. He better not have Raquel in there when Ariana gets back. According to New York Post, she got to Ariana and Tom's house late Tuesday and left Wednesday afternoon. Not sure why she didn't stay to watch the new VPR episode. With 
Oh, snap. Dude, this is just too much. Okay, I'm going to take this off the screen because what happened? Oh, oops. I wanted to quickly show the, here we go, Skin of All Survival Kit. Okay, stop screen, share screen. Can you see this? Oops, here we go. Okay, so this link is in the show notes and then also in my bio link, profile link. I put in, I gathered everything for you guys. All of VPR, all their books, fancy AF cocktails, Shana's music, and then I started adding in the things that I've been using for my own like comfort. Because there are 10 seasons of Vanderpump Rules, but not only is there 10 seasons to watch, and each season has like 20 plus episodes plus three part reunions, but it's a lot. And I've been sick, but also I like have a bunch of kids that I got to take care of. And I just want to give you guys all everything that you could ever need for to make your Vanderpump Rules binging experience elevated. And so I have everything from the all their books and stuff like that, but then a body pillow. So I have a body pillow next to me all the time. Um, because my Chromecast isn't working lately, I've been putting my laptop on my body pillow. But also, like, you want to be comfortable when you're watching TV, right? And then also for me, um, this is just something that I have in my everyday stuff. But I have O'Keefe's working hands. Literally. Oh, my God. Where's my O'Keefe's working hands? <laughs> what? I literally just had it, I feel like. Oh, my God. Whatever. Anyways, that stuff is like the only stuff that works on me. And then same with the, their healthy food stuff. But then also, I'm, if you know me, you may know that I'm half Korean. And I love Korean like K-beauty products. And um, putting one of those sheet masks on while you're watching Vanderpump is always nice. These are only $9.99 for this whole pack. Um, but then also, if you have kids... You might want to get some AirPods or noise canceling. There's a couple options here. My favorite scent or one of my favorite scents and candle is uh, Le Labo Santal 26. I don't know if I said that right, but that is like one of my favorites. And you can get their concrete candles. There's three of them. Or you can get the one. Oh, I just love it so much. And then this, um, I was just thinking about all the stress, you know, that we have from Scannaval. And I was thinking about Sutton and how she uses her little, like, roller. So because I like to do skincare while I'm watching, I thought that would be a nice one to add. Also, these pajamas, I put in, like, luxury pajamas because I like to wear my Korean pajamas, which I haven't found. I need to source those myself so I can sell them directly to you guys because they're my favorite and they're... I can't even describe it. Like, I don't know how to explain how amazing Korean pajamas are. And also, another thing that I love about um, Korean products are their mink blankets. I have one on my bed, which you've probably seen in, like, some of my stories when I take pictures of, like, my laptop and the perfume that I wear. I always have that in the background because I forget, I call it my minky. Instead of blanky, like, my kids have their blankies. My Korean mink blanket is my minky, and I freaking love it. And I found um, some that you guys can get yourself to experience the luxury of a Korean mink blanket. But also, I don't drink, um, so I don't drink alcohol, but I do love having like a crafted mocktail. And so I found a bunch of different uh, mocktails that you can order from Amazon to enhance your viewing pleasure. This one, Wowie, is hemp infused, which I thought was pretty cool. And then for me personally, the lightning bolts are triggering, but some are finding comfort in it. So I found a gold one and a silver one, and I'm going to add more things to this list, but I wanted to get you guys started because 
this whole Scandal thing is like no freaking joke, man. <laughs> but I want to thank you all for joining. Hold on. Let me get back on track. I need my notes. I need my notes. 8.30. Oh, my gosh. That's a long day. All right. Well, again, I want to thank you all for joining me today. Make sure you follow, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you can be updated when we go live for Cannabis Mom Boss and Bravo and Blaze. Again, subscribing, reviewing, sharing, liking, and or leaving a five-star rating is incredibly appreciated and helps the show to continue to grow. See you next time. Stay lit, fam. Thank you.